Hey, ladies and gentlemen, Adrian here for Digital Dojos. I've had no shortage of Apple coverage today. It's just one of those days, obviously, following the event, and I'm sure a lot of the other YouTubers out there, if you follow tech YouTubers, are going to be doing this, or just the news in general. But this video specifically, I want to focus on the uh, topic of deciding between the iPhone 8s or the iPhone X or iPhone 10. You still have a lot of time to do this, but I kind of want to break it down for some of you who may be on the fence. Now, first and foremost, let's obviously get the main factors out of the way. Price, so what you have and what you're willing to spend is obviously a big factor that's going to you know, de uh, determine your outcome. And then two, where you're coming from. Are you coming from an Android phone? Are you coming from an iPhone 7, an iPhone 7 Plus? Are you coming from an iPhone 6 or iPhone 4S? That's obviously going to be a big factor in your decision to upgrade and, and, and you know, your results and the difference you'll see, obviously. Um, but as somebody who's on the 7 Plus currently and, and more than likely going to the iPhone X or iPhone 10, uh, I want to give, give my thoughts from a technical perspective and things that you should keep in mind when choosing between the three phones. Let's talk about the iPhone 8s first, iPhone 8 and iPhone, iPhone 8 Plus. Deciding between those two really just comes down to form factor and screen size. Do you want the bigger screen? Do you want the bigger form factor phone? Because for a lot of people I know, the Plus is just too big for them from a pure you know, form factor um, you know, this is the S7 Edge Plus here, and you can see the Plus is still bigger than that. Um, it's a really big phone, but you also get a, a much bigger screen. On top of that, you get a better camera. You get that wide angle, the dual cameras there for things like portrait mode and, and things of that nature. So you, you do get a better uh, spec phone in terms of like the camera and the screen. If that matters to you, if you're somebody who really uses the camera as your daily driver and you want the better photos and you're willing to compromise by carrying a bigger phone, then by all means go with the plus route if you're deciding between the 8 and the plus. Um, we'll bring the iPhone 10 in later on. Um, if you're okay with a smaller form factor, then the iPhone 8 is uh, probably going to be your better choice because you have you know, 4.7 inch screen, you have the A11 chip. Everything other than the screen size is exactly the same between the non-plus model and the plus. Um, it has wireless charging, it has all those great features that were integrated, um, and it's a faster overall phone. Now, when you bring the iPhone 10 into the mix, there's a lot of factors that come into play here. The iPhone 10 or iPhone X um, is all screen, so it's edge-to-edge -edge display. And the interesting thing here is you get the same, it's the same form factor, so the same size and footprint of the iPhone 8 or even the iPhone 7 for comparison, yet the screen real estate is bigger than the Plus by like 0.3 inches. It's 5.8 inch display versus the 5.5 of uh, a Plus model. And the reason obviously being is it removes the chin at the top and, or removes the chin at the bottom and removes the, I guess, the forehead at the top there. And you get all screen. You get all screen real estate making up for, even though it's a smaller form factor of a phone, uh, making up in terms of screen size. And not only is it a bigger screen, it's a much better screen. We're talking contrast ratio. We're talking um, the uh, HDR display. So it's an OLED display. Better colors, more vibrant, sharper text. Just overall a much better vibrant display with the iPhone 10 and that's really what you're paying for as a main feature. That does mean however you're losing things like Touch ID. You no longer have that home button so you have to kind of get acclimated to swiping up to get out of apps and to unlock your phone it's either typing in your passcode or using the new Face ID through the front facing camera which is a facial recognition software. Now, that all said, on the other kind of just hardware spe spec side, the iPhone 10 is the same processor. It has the same wireless charging as the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus. So you're not losing that, you know, those features there. It's the same exact feature set in terms of those. You're just getting a much better screen and you're getting a slightly improved front-facing camera because the front-facing camera supports things like portrait mode and things like that on the new iPhone X or iPhone 10. So again, if those things, those small things really matter to you and, and, and those camera aspects really, really matter to you, obviously the iPhone 10 is the best camera hands down out of all three phones. Um, and it's almost a nice compromise. You're getting the smaller form factor, better screen, better camera, all in the iPhone 10. However, again, coming back around to price, that means you're going to be paying $1,000 at the baseline, so that's $200 more than you would pay for an iPhone 8 Plus um, in order to get a better screen, a smaller form factor, and slightly, slightly better specs in terms of the camera and whatnot. Um, so that's what it comes down to. Do you want uh, you know, the bigger screen? Do you want um, the better camera than the iPhone 10? If those things aren't really detrimental to you, if you want to keep Touch ID, if you don't want to lose that, um, then it comes down to do you want the bigger screen with the iPhone 8 Plus or the iPhone 8? 
overall, I'd say if you're coming from the 7 or 7 Plus, in my opinion, to make it more of an upgrade, the iPhone 10 makes the most sense if you're willing to pay the extra two to $300. Um, if you're coming from something previous, much more older, then the iPhone 8 still might make sense to you. And in my personal opinion, I think the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus should have been labeled the iPhone 7S and 7S Plus. So I think coming from the 7, um, it's worth to pay the extra bit to get the iPhone 10. That's just me. Um, otherwise, take a look at the 8 and 8 Plus and decide what makes more sense to you, what matters, size, form factor, those things. Otherwise, you're getting across the board all the same things, same processor, same wireless charging capability, same glass body. You're just not getting that full screen experience that you would get with the iPhone 10. That's the biggest separating factor between them all. All right. Hope that wraps things up. Hope to give you some insight into your purchase habits and whatever it is you may be pre-ordering and dropping your hard-earned cash on. As always, love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below, and thanks for watching.